Hello and welcome to TCM. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. This is night one with our star of the month for October, Lucille Ball. We'll have Lucy movies every Thursday night in October. And starting next Tuesday, every Tuesday in October, there will be a new episode of The Plot Thickens. Lucy, she is the focus of the third season. And joining me, the story editor of the podcast, Joanne Farion, senior producer, Yako Friedman. Guys, thanks very much. It's been uh, lovely, as always, uh, working with you over these uh, past months. I'm the host of the podcast, by the way. Um, so before our previous movie, we talked about uh, uh, why Lucy. And ultimately, it's that it's a compelling story. And then we found all this uh, wonderful audio of Lucy talking about her life, talking candidly. You listened to a ton of, uh, of, of Lucy talking about Lucy. What, what struck you most about her, about the way she looks at the entity that is Lucy? She was very self-aware. She knew what she was good at. She knew what she was not good at. And she knew why she was good at what she was good at. So she knew that she got a lot of training and she credited everybody who always helped her. And she worked with some of the amazing comedy greats, and she learned from everybody. Give some examples. Who, who, who helped her? Who did, she, who did she pull from? She learned from Buster Keaton, who took an interest in her. Uh, she did a movie with the Marx Brothers that's coming up later tonight. She even worked with the Three Stooges. She had some connection to Harold Lloyd, the silent film star, even though he didn't have a whole lot of interest in her. But her secret, and what she would constantly tell everybody, is work get the work done, be on a set, observe, and learn from everybody. And that was how she was able to become who she was, because she soaked it in. The movie that we have coming up right now is from 1937, Stage Door. Lucy has a significant role. All-star cast led by Katherine Eppard and Ginger Rogers at the top of the cast with Lucy. And here you have a struggling actress trying to make it. A lot of parallels to exactly what Lucy was going through at the time. Uh, so... That early life uh, of Lucy's and that pull of, I want to get out and do something great, and she was interested in acting, performing at least early on, and this desire to, you know, meet a handsome boy and be swept off her feet, that th those were competing interests for her early in her life. Where did she grow up? Jamestown, New York, right? Small town. Uh, not a big place. She, you, you, you'll learn this in episode one, her, her father actually dies when she's three years old. She does not have an easy life. So a lot that happens where home becomes this reoccurring theme, this homesickness, this, this wanting to be, you know, with family. And you see that struggle, even when Lucy gets married, we know about her famous marriage, right, to, to Desi Arnaz. It happens throughout her life. And she didn't come from a showbiz town. It was really desolate. And she had to think about where she was going next. I'm going to go to New York. I'm going to make it there. Well, that doesn't necessarily work out. I'm going to go to Hollywood. I'm going to make it there. And she is not an overnight success. She works and works and works. And she becomes really powerful and really good at what she does because she has so much experience. As people hear in the podcast, when she went to New York, she talked her mother into letting her, at what, 15, take 15. acting and go into New York to take acting classes. Mm -hmm. and and who does she find in her acting class in New York? This little kid from Jamestown, who's there? Betty Davis. Betty Davis. Yeah, and it turns out Betty Davis was quite good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, star of the class. And uh, teachers uh, react to Lucy by saying... You'll never make it. Yeah. You have no talent. Go <laughs> home. Yeah. 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 Obviously, it, uh, it worked out in the end. But throughout, I'm really struck by how close uh, the family was. I mean, her brother, her grandfather, her mother... And then her cousin, who was like a sister to her. Mm -hmm, Cleo. And, and Dee Dee, her mother, who basically was on set for, like, nearly every episode. Everything until yes. 1977, yeah. I think. Maybe 1976. But she never missed a show that Lucy did. And Dee Dee, you'll find Dee Dee became a guest on, like, late-night talk shows. Was. It was like, no, it, was, it became a job to be Lucille Ball's mother. And, and again, Yakov found all of that tape, too, and all of that audio. So we get to hear in Dee Dee's own voice, right, um, some of these stories, which yeah. is really quite remarkable. As most people probably uh, suspect, uh, you can't tell uh, a Lucy's story without at least in part telling Desi's story. Mm. And of the 10 episodes, one entire episode is, uh, is devoted to Desi. And obviously, Desi is a big part of, of, of many other episodes. 
Desi is absolutely fascinating. And he would not have become who he was had Lucy not recognized the greatness there. And she fought for him because she wanted that home. So this is 1951 uh, when the show went on the air and she was arguing with CBS television to co-star, live with, be married to a Cuban-American immigrant. And as you might imagine, that... Welcome back. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. I'm joined by a couple of my colleagues, key players in getting our podcast, The Plot Thickens, on the air. Uh, season three, The Plot Thickens, Lucy, all about Lucia Ball. First episode will be available Tuesday, October 12th. Story editor, Joanne Farion, senior producer, Yako Friedman. So here in Stage Door, uh, we see Lucy pull an un-Lucy move, which mm. is uh, not uh, falling in love, that, that happened to Lucy, and, and, and wanting to be uh, married, that happened to Lucy, but giving up her career to make it happen, that, that Lucy uh, did not and would not do. So interesting, because one of the things that I learned in, in working on this podcast that, as you mentioned, Gregory Lokava, he actually had his secretaries listen to the conversations of the actresses in the movie, and then that night would literally write the dialogue, right? And so he tried to base the characters on who these people really were. And to your point, Lu Lucy even wore her own clothes in this. And you can tell when you watch this movie, you could see she sticks out, right? She looks like Lucy. That She becomes the Lucy that I think she we get a, to she, know her. She had a very particular sense of style. She did, yeah. she did. But he gets the ending wrong, to your point, right? That's not what Lucy would have done. That's not the... And we know that. We know that that's not the choice. She would not have given up on that. Lucy would have wanted it all. Yeah. I mean, that's what Lucy went she for. She would have gotten it all. She could have made that happen. And But we also now know from a couple years later, uh, in the early 1940s, I guess actually 1940 when she meets Desi, right? Is that correct? I yeah. think that's yeah. the right. So uh, this movie's 37. 1940, when she meets uh, Desi Arnaz, uh, you know, they did not... Uh, they did not go on dates and develop. Uh, like, they saw each other, and 48 seconds later... Yes. I mean, that was chemistry that was magic, right? And it's a beautiful thing, because we see that chemistry when we see them on screen together. Yeah. It was very palpable, and they were very into each other. Yeah, they fell very hard for each other, and they fell hard very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Ginger Rogers at the top of the cast of the, of the movie we just saw, Stage Door. Leela Rogers, Ginger's mom, really important role that she played, real big influence on Lucy's life, and that you can tie that back to TCM. Well, Leela Rogers really lobbied for Lucy to get this part in Stage Door, and Stage Door is really her breakthrough role. And Pandro Bourbon, who was the producer of the movie and a big RKO executive, he also lobbied for Lucy, and his influence wasn't worth it. But Leela Rogers, she was the reason that Lucy got this part. And it was at the very tail end of their collaboration because Lucy was in Leela's acting troupe that she did for this little theater in the RKO lot. And she learned and studied under Leela for a couple of years, and she was really thankful for it. And 20 years later, through a whole bunch of circumstances that you'll have to listen to the podcast mm -hmm. to hear about, Lucy ends up with Desi Arnaz buying RKO. And one of the first things she does is she reopens the Leela Rogers Little Theater. And she takes on the Leela Rogers role and she starts mentoring young actors and actresses. And one of the first people that she took under her wing was Robert Osborne, yeah. the very first host of TCM. And Robert Osborne, he said this story a bunch of times. I heard it on the 2015 Classic Cruise. Lucy at some point said to him, you're not the best actor, but you know a lot about movies and we don't have any movie historians. So maybe you should go into that. And he took her advice and he became the Robert Osborne that was the first host of TCM. And there is a direct link to TCM success way back to Lucy. First episode, Drops, there, I said it, drops Tuesday, October 12th. Uh, we're certain you'll enjoy it. Joanne Farion, Yako Friedman, uh, thanks for all you've done with the podcast. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Stay with us. Our Star of the Month salute to Lucille Ball continues as Lucy stars with the Marx Brothers. <laughs> 